very excited. I've got a laser. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Thomas, for showing me the laser. So, um, first of all, Thomas said he was going to do something dangerous. I'm going to do something dangerous too, and it's try to present to you through the medium of an industrial strength man flu. Um, as my wife says, how do you know a man's got the cold? Don't worry, he'll tell you. Um, so, how many of you recognise that from your education? Hands up. I should probably have said, how many of you don't recognise that from your education? Yeah. Um, probably since the 19th century onwards, that, to a very large extent, is what education has looked like. It's how we teach people and it's how we assess people. And I suspect that right away you get a little bit of a cold shiver and you start to ask some questions about why the heck we do that. Um, at SQA, that's one of the things that we're doing right now. We're asking, why the heck do we do that? How many of you enjoyed it? Good. There's always one, and that's absolutely fine. And that just goes to prove that we all have different learning styles and preferences, and that's a good thing. So. One of the big questions that this throws up in the future is, should there be a different model for skills education? Now, I don't want to prejudice <laughs> your thinking on this. It's an important question. Should there be a different model for skills education? Um, yes, there should be. Some of you have seen this graph before. I think it's a really important one as we start to think about how we design qualifications in the future. It's rate of adoption of technology from 1900 through to now. And you can see back in 1900, the type of things, the telephone, electricity, the car, radio, and so on, it was taking a generation. It was taking whole lives for those technologies to be adopted. In a sense, it was relatively easy to design qualifications if technology was moving at that pace. However, fast forward to now into the 2000s plus, we are in an age of vertical adoption. All technologies are being adopted incredibly quickly. Many of them are being superseded incredibly quickly as well. So for us at SQA, one of the big challenges, how do we design a qualification that's going to last for two years, three years, four years plus, if that's the kind of environment? Technology has superseded the qualification before it's hit the marketplace a lot of the time. And that is a major challenge for us as we think about skills for the future. My other favourite graph, Thomas's were infinitely better than mine. Again, some of you will have seen this one before. I think it's another really important one for us to think about, um, particularly with Christmas coming up. Um, your average success route for a turkey is the turkey gets fatter over time. Turkeys eat whatever turkeys eat. They get bigger and better. The turkey's happy. Of course, what turkeys don't focus in on when they're doing that is Christmas Day, when suddenly that trajectory changes markedly, dramatically, and terminally for the turkey. Um, why am I talking about turkeys? And I'm from the SQA. That's disruption, essentially. And I've been using Airbnb as an example in this talk for such a long time now, so it's actually very exciting to see someone from Airbnb actually here. Um, Airbnb, in one sense, is a hotel firm that doesn't own hotels. Uber is a taxi firm that doesn't own taxis, and so on and so on. Spotify is a music firm that doesn't sell you CDs and bits of plastic anymore. That's disruption for those industries. And one of the big things that I think we've got to wrestle with as educationalists is, has education had its Christmas moment? Has it had the moment that changes it utterly and hugely and beyond recognition? Or are we still, to a greater or lesser extent, doing the thing that we were doing in that first picture? Are we still putting people in rows and assessing them at an end point and then putting them out into the workplace and hoping that they can thrive there? That, I think, is a really important question for us as we design qualifications for the future, as we assess candidates for the future. This, I think, is a really interesting quote as well. Um, I'm sure lots of you will be aware of Ken Robinson's work. Um, one of the things that he focuses in on is creativity. Um, and I'm a big fan of thinking about creativity in education. So the 21st century, humanity faces some of its most daunting challenges. And our best resource to cultivate our singular abilities is imagination, creativity, and innovation. That's what will make us different. That's what will make us, as humans, successful in the future. That's what will make educational establishments useful and different in the future. And it talks then about the great peril of not investing in those abilities. Now, those are the kind of abilities we've been talking about all morning, and I think that's really, really exciting and important for the future of Scottish education. The big thing um, that I'm working on at the moment at SQA is reimagining, for want of a less pretentious world, um, our HN qualifications. 
Now, HNs for us are one of our really important central qualifications. It's a two-year qualification. It's post-school, so it's equivalent of first and second year at university. And for us, the big things that we are now thinking about is how do we ensure that a candidate at the end of those two years can genuinely think creatively, can communicate and work in teams, can be flexible and quick to adapt? Now, no surprise there, those are the messages that you've been hearing all morning, and I think it's really exciting to know that that's very much what we're all thinking about. The 21st century learner and 21st century learning are right at the heart of the debate that we're having internally. What does it mean to be an effective citizen and worker and increasingly leader? Because we're hearing that younger and younger people are starting companies and becoming leaders and so on. What are those effective key skills for the 21st century workplace and community? And right at the very heart of it for us, the big challenge that we are wrestling with is how do you develop both qualifications and learners who are genuinely dynamic, flexible, creative and resilient? Now, those four words, I think, for us are really key to what we are looking at. Resilience. How do people bounce back from failure? How do they manage and live through change? How do they move from surviving to thriving in that kind of fast-paced world? Way back, John Dewey, the educationalist, said, if we teach today as we taught yesterday, we rob our children of tomorrow. And that's still a really, really good quote. Education should move on. It should change. It shouldn't always just look like rows and tests at the end. Now, I know it's ironic that the guy from the SQA is the one who's saying that, but assessment can happen in many different ways, and that's one of the key things that we're looking at as we move on. Now, you've seen this slide many times. Um, I think it's a really, really important slide to think about because, actually, no matter where you go, no matter what country you talk about, as we talk about 21st century skills, meta skills, and so on, there are loads of different names for it. The one name I would urge us not to use is soft skills. These aren't soft skills. They're right at the very heart of what the successful, thriving individual of the future will be about. That's actually quite hard. Now, they do tend to fall into three broad areas. One is managing the self. One is thriving in that wider community. And the other one is creating and innovating. Now, for me, those three pillars are the key three pillars of our skills for the future. And I use this um, because I think it's a really useful way to think about this back in the experience of the learner, the person who's being trained, who's experiencing that world. That traditional picture that I started with is very much about a world where the role of the teacher is to guide, activities contrived, it's all bell-bound, it happens in the classroom. The approach to task is about the individual, and assessment is about the individual proving that they can remember things. The process is frequently hidden. It's a very static experience. The individual actually is ignored. It's about the group getting through. Emotion, which I think is another really interesting one for us to tackle, is ignored. How you feel on any given day actually doesn't count because the learning process will always be the same in that world. There's some inclusiveness and the role of the learner is very much directed. Thinking about a high functioning classroom and actually the kind of work-based learning that a lot of us have been speaking about today exhibits pretty much all of those things. The role of the teacher, I think, in the future is to challenge. It's to encourage and facilitate learning. It's not to be the sage on the stage to impart knowledge as a gift. Activity should be authentic, and that does mean working in the workplace. It means testing your skills, challenging them, failing, learning, iterating, and so on. Time should be flexible. Space should be different. It should look like a workshop. Tasks can be group tasks in this future. Processes should be highly visible and so on. And learning should happen in different places. It can happen inside, outside. It can happen in the workshop, the classroom and so on. Emotions acknowledged. And that, I think, is a really key point in bringing learning back to being about the individual. If emotions acknowledged, the individual thrives. Inclusiveness. Learning is for all. It's not a secret gatekeeper as it was in the 19th century and so on. And the learner is being encouraged to be a self-managing learner. So that is one area in which we are thinking about how we can move towards the kind of learning example of the future. Now, the HN for us traditionally was based solely on a job. You had an HN in hairdressing, an HN in engineering or journalism. And we filled that pot with knowledge required to do that one job. What we want to do is try to turn that on its head in the next new model for an HN. Now, this is very much in its early phases, but for us, we want there to be a common core to all qualifications. 
So whether you're working in construction, hairdressing, health and beauty, the media, irrespective, that common core will be around 21st century learning skills, meta skills. It will be about developing the self to thrive in that world. It can be contextualised. It should be contextualised. And we can work across sectors and so on. Beyond that, then, we'll start to develop skills in enterprise and context and so on. So supporting projects that enable the candidate to develop more sector-specific knowledge to understand how they fit into particular sectors and so on. And then, the third ring at the outside, then we'll develop the industry-specific training. So the starting point for future qualifications at HN, at SCQF level 7 and 8, will be focusing on the individual. It will be about developing that common core of 21st century learning skills, of meta skills, which allow them to thrive, which recognises that they will probably change jobs several times, as probably most of the people in this room did. But we want them to have skills to be able to thrive as that happens or as the job that they're in changes and evolves, that they can do it with it. Outside that, we want to ensure that they've got the contextual understanding to genuinely be able to move across different areas, and then that we give them skills to be able to thrive in a particular workforce. We believe that that's the kind of model which allow people, as they go towards industry training, to genuinely thrive in the future. Hopefully that's been an interesting contribution. Um, thank you very much for your time.